For some time now, I have wanted to add LED string lights to my outside deck to give the area a relaxing, warm feel at night. I also wanted a way to power these LED lights using only solar energy, as well as have the ability to remotely turn them on and off from my smartphone. There are basic solar string lights available on the market, but I wanted more control over my light. So in this video, I will show you my process for turning some ordinary string lights into solar powered smart LED string lights, as well as how I turn this boring outdoor deck into something more inviting. So let's jump right into it. So as many of you know, when it comes to LED string lights, there are two common types which are AC and DC powered lights. I went with the DC 12 volt style light so I would not have to install a DC to AC inverter in my solar setup which would add to the overall cost and completion time for this project. Next, due to space requirements, I decided to install my LED string lights pigtail cable in my electrical tote which is currently used to house my 12 volt battery and Wi-Fi relay. Note, if your charge controller supports it, you can also wire these lights up to your charge controller's load terminals. Next, I needed to find the proper size cable gland for the new cable I will be installing for the string lights to help keep water and debris out of the tote. I will leave links for all the major components used in this video in the description. Before getting started, I disconnected my solar power source from the battery system. Also, please understand that the content in this video is not intended to substitute professional advice. Always seek the advice of a qualified electrician for any questions you may have regarding electrical or solar work. I used a stepper bit to create a new hole for the solar string lights cable connection. You can use a normal drill bit, however, I found it easier and quicker to use a stepper bit when working with cable glands. Just be careful not to make the hole larger than the cable gland you plan to insert into the hole. Note, I installed this pigtail style connection to give myself the ability to quickly disconnect or connect the LED string lights from my battery system. This is optional, but I highly recommend it since they come with the extension cable I will be installing next. Also, I did revisit this area later on and created a drip loop or something close to it so that if water drops did land on this cable, the water would have a hard time entering my battery tote. Next, I moved on to installing my waterproof extension cable. I used exterior screws and plastic cable clamps to secure the extension cable to the wooden wall. Next, I used a one inch spade drill bit to create a hole so I could route my extension cable up to the upper deck. To prevent wood blowout, I finished drilling out the hole from the opposite side by locating the small hole that is created from the tip of the spade drill bit. Once the hole was drilled out, I continued routing my light's extension cable up to the upper deck. Note, the connections on the cables are key to help prevent connecting them in the wrong orientation. Next, I used zip ties to help secure the cable to my downspout since I wanted to avoid drilling anything into the flashing. I also wanted to reduce how much of the deck structure I had to alter for this project since I may change things up in the future. To route the cable inside the upper deck, I used a box knife to cut a small hole into the net barrier. This may not be the best option, but again, to avoid adding additional holes into the wood structure, I decided to go this route since I know I can patch this area later if I decided to change anything. Once the extension cable was finally routed to the upper deck, I could finally move on to working on the layout for the LED string lights. The length of the string lights I ordered were not long enough to wrap around my entire deck, so I decided to find the midpoint of the deck so the LED string light started and ended in roughly the same spot on the left and right side. After finding my starting point, I used a small drill bit to make pilot holes for the cup hooks that the LED lights would hang from. Once the first LED string light was attached, the rest of the process went by fairly quickly since I no longer needed to measure anything. Another feature I like about this type of LED string light set is that the bulbs can be replaced if one ever fails. After all the string lights were attached to the hooks, I went back and secured the parts of the cable that were hanging to give the overall look a neat appearance. Next, 
Next, I pick back up on secure my extension cable to the inside wooden post. After I finish securing the extension cable, I switch my attention to the electrical side of the project since I wanted to verify I was receiving the correct voltage before connecting my LED string lights to the system. I started with a Wi-Fi relay that gave me the ability to remotely turn the string lights on and off. I really like this Wi-Fi relay because of how cheap it is and how easy it is to set up using a smartphone. I attach plastic standoffs to the Wi-Fi relay to make the process of mounting it to my wooden stand in my electrical tote a lot easier. Before I could get started mounting the new Wi-Fi relay, I needed to move my heavy duty relay over to make some additional room. If you are wondering, this heavy duty relay in the currently installed Wi-Fi relay is being used to control a water pump for my guarding, which I'll put a link to in the description. Also, do not worry if you have not been following along for the entire electrical setup for this solar system. I will put a link to a simple to follow diagram that only shows what is necessary for connecting the LED stream lights to a 12 volt battery system that is powered by solar energy. Next, I secured the Wi-Fi relay down with some leftover exterior screws. Afterward, I began working on connecting my LED stream lights connection to my electrical system. To keep this video shorter, I would not show my entire process of preparing every wire or connection since it is a bit repetitive, but I will try to explain important details as I go. I first started with the LED string light cable by using a crimper to add a buck connector to the positive or red wire to extend the length of the wire. I also did the same to the negative or black wire. Next, I connected the negative wire to my negative bus bar which is tied directly to the negative terminal of my 12 volt battery. Next, I connected the positive wire from my LED string light cable to the normally open terminal block connection on my Wi-Fi relay. This terminal block is tied to the big blue component which is a relay and it will handle the heavy job of allowing power to pass through to my LED lights. Following that, I connected a positive connection from my positive bus bar to the positive input terminal block on my Wi-Fi relay. Next, I connected another positive connection from my positive bus bar to the other side of the normally open terminal block connection. Next, I connected a negative connection from my negative bus bar to the negative input terminal on my Wi-Fi relay. As soon as I make this connection, you will notice the red LED on the Wi-Fi relay turns on, which is a good sign that it is receiving enough input power. Note, I will be adding a fuse later on in the video to the relay connection to provide a little more protection to the setup. At this stage, I just wanted to confirm the main components function correctly. Next, I moved on to setting up the Wi-Fi relay module with the EWE Link out. The app makes the setup process really simple, so I will not spend too much time on this, but I have found that I run into fewer issues when I set up the device using the compatible mode, which is located at the bottom of the add device screen. Note, the Wi-Fi relay does not support 5G wireless networks, so for example, make sure your smartphone is connected to a 2.4 GHz wireless network before you start the setup process. Once the Wi-Fi relay was paired with my EWE Link account, I could then control the relay with the press of a button from the app. By default, the Wi-Fi relay is in a mode where it will automatically turn back off when I press the OWN button in the smartphone app. This is typically used for garage opening applications, but for my case, I want my LED string lights to stay on until I press the button again in the app to turn them off. To change the mode, I had to press the mode switch button one time, which is located closest to the outside of the board. Now, when I hit the on button in the app, you can notice that the out button and the red LED for the relay stays on until I press the button in the app a second time. Once all the primary electrical work was completed, I went back up to the deck to verify that the electrical polarity was correct before connecting my LED string lights connector to my extension cable. In other words, if you look closely at the included AC to DC power supply, there's a positive sign below the right port and a negative sign below the left port. So I needed to verify that the DC power coming out of my extension cable had the positive power on the right and the negative power on the left based on this orientation of the cable. So what I found after performing the test is that my polarities were reversed or in other words, the positive and negative connections were on the wrong side. 
So the quickest solution for this mistake was to swap the electrical connections to my pigtail connector in my electrical tote. Depending on what type of extension cable you end up buying, you may not run into this problem, but I would advise you check the polarity before installing anything. Since swapping the red and black connections this way can be confusing for someone troubleshooting this system later on, I added a label and black tape to help identify what the new configuration was. After the wiring was corrected, I checked the polarity again and thankfully everything looked great and I could proceed with connecting the LED string lights to the extension cable. Once the two cables were connected, I finished working on securing the dangling cables with some more plastic cable clamps. After I finished securing the cables, I began quickly making a new wooden base that would support a fuse block I found on Amazon to help protect some of my components and wiring in the system. I decided to make the wooden base roughly the same height as the current wooden base in the electrical tote in case in the future I wanted to add a second 12 volt battery to the system. I used exterior screws to secure all the components together, but how you make your base is completely up to you. This was just something I quickly tried to put together, but still reliable enough to get the job done. As you can see from the electrical diagram reference, I rewired my Wi-Fi relay to connect to one of the fuse block circuits. Next, I wired a connection from my negative bus bar to the primary negative contact on the fuse block. After that, I wired a connection from my positive bus bar to the primary positive contact on the fuse block. Now, these LED string lights do not pull a lot of current, so I was not too concerned about my Wi-Fi relay module, but I did want protection from any short circuits that may develop in the wire connections. I ended up installing a one amp fuse for my string light circuit. Also, what I like about this fuse block is if a fuse does blow, the corresponding red LED would turn on to help me quickly identify the problem and the fuse block has five spare circuits I can use for other applications in the future. Once the fuse block was installed and wired into my LED stream light circuit, my wife and I spent some time turning a boring deck into something a little more inviting. Let's take a look at the before and the after. So overall, I really enjoyed working on this project because one, the LED string lights are completely powered by solar. Two, I can quickly turn the LED string lights on and off just using my smartphone. Or since I have a voice assistant like Amazon Alexa, I can use my voice to turn on and off the lights. Alexa, turn on outdoor deck lights. Alexa, turn off outdoor deck lights. If you found this video useful or think others may take something away from the video, be sure to subscribe and like the video to encourage YouTube to share this video with others. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.